What's good, y'all, and welcome to the final installment of my Road to Ghost of Tsushima Hello, series. Everyone, I'm Jason from and apparently, I ended up saving the best for last. Combat because today, ladies and gentlemen, as you can tell from the title, we will be reviewing The Last Samurai. The and. Bruh. This movie was something else man like this I don't care how pretentious I sound how much hyperbolic I sound I don't give a fuck this film is a fucking masterpiece and this is straight up art <laughs> legit man I like I did not expect this movie to end up be to be as good as it ended up being like I was shocked after I finished it and being like, wow, that was way better than I expected. This is honestly one of my favorite films of all time now. Easy. This film is a masterpiece, and if you were to ask me, Glenn, out of the three films you reviewed, Seven Samurai, Ron, and this was my favorite. I gotta give it to The Last Samurai. I know when you probably the Akira Kurosawa film buffs are probably like, Oh, how dare you say this Hollywood dribble is better than the work of Akira Kurosawa. Or something like that. But I don't give a fuck, man. That's my opinion. Suck my dick. <laughs> anyway, man. This movie... Fuck, man. Like, this movie be him. I can't even put into words, man. Like, this movie was phenomenal. That's like. Ugh. That's really all I could say, man. It's. <sighs> anyway. Enough me rambling. Let's just jump right into this review, man. Because. Oh boy, do we got a lot to discuss. But before we jump right in that, I actually found out that this film was actually the bit of a source of controversy back in the day when it first came out because of its name and the fact that a white lead in Tom, that white man in Tom Cruise was the lead character. So let us end the debate once and for all, shall we? Alright, I got my copy of The Last Samurai on Blu-ray. Let us end this debate, ladies and gentlemen. Ellis. Is this name racist? Is the movie racist? Is Tom Cruise? Is the singular or plural or whatever? But first, let me get my glasses. Yes, I know I look weird without them. Tom Cruise, The Last Samurai. Do you see an is? No? Then that means it's fucking plural, you fucking idiots. <laughs> yeah, apparently even back then, in 2003, SGWs were just as fucking stupid as they were then as they are now. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get right into the movie. So the movie is directed by Edward Sawick and stars Tom Cruise. Ken Watanabe, Koyuki, Hiroyuki, Sada, and many more. And the plot of The Last Samurai, yeah, The Last Samurai, is they do have a soldier by the name of Ethan Al Green, played by Tom Cruise, who is a very decorated soldier, has a bunch of supposed victorious battles under his belt. But because of what you have seen in those battles and his war, he has become a complete drunk. And after he has been contracted to a specific train soldier to fight the Samurai, with Ken Watanabe's character, who eventually kidnaps him, nurses him back to health, and shows him the new the way of the samurai. Like this yeah. And and if you couldn't tell by that plot synopsis, this movie is very similar to another movie that came out uh, more recently, Avatar. <laughs> James Cameron's Avatar. Legit. When I uh, I forget whether I was telling this to servers in the night of the DMs. Or uh, in just one of my random tweets when I was talking about like samurai films and what I was going to review for the series, he legit said that dude, at the last samurai is like Avatar. And after he said that, and I thought back because I knew a little bit of it because this was the legit the first time I've ever seen this film was right here when I when I, as I'm reviewing it. This was the first time I saw the last samurai. I've seen clips of it. My mom has had this movie on Blu-ray for God knows how long. I haven't sat down and watched it myself, but this was the first time I watched it. I remember because I knew, and like I said, I knew bits of the plot by this point. I was like, oh shit, you're right. This is very similar to Avatar. <laughs> I guess, I, but I would say, yes, they do share a lot of similarities in terms of their plot, uh, how stuff progresses throughout the story. 
But I would say that there's enough difference between the two where I wouldn't straight up call Avatar the last samurai with blue people, you know. That's and I would know and I would I don't think I would ever accuse the Bill James Cameron of stealing. <laughs> <laughs> or straight up copying a movie like that. Uh, but that's just probably my bias and fanboyism just talking at that point. But anyway, whatever. Uh, if you were to ask me, Glenn, which one did you think was Beverly Hills 2? Honestly, I probably would have I would have to rewatch Avatar to give you guys a clear answer which one I thought was better between this, uh, between The Last Samurai and this one. But I think I might give actually this the slight edge. I think. I'm not sure. Because those are because both of these films are both phenomenal in their own in their own right. Anyway. So let me talk about something good. First off, I gotta talk about the cast. First off, Tom Cruise. I uh, first off, I gotta say, this low key might actually be my favorite look of Tom Cruise. The long hair with the beard. I actually kinda low key like really dig that look. Almost kinda wish he brought it back. He brings it back. That look that look real looks good. But his performance in the film, as long as Ken uh as long as, long as Ken Watson plays uh, Katsumoto, uh, are both fantastic. Like the relationship and bond that, and the friendship that formed between these two throughout the film is quite something to watch as you have these two people from completely different sides of the world with completely different outlooks, uh, ideologies, and everything. Seeing kind of like and like coming together and becoming friends much more, and you have to, uh, you know you have Nathan played by Tom Cruise, seeing the beauty in the ja in the samurai culture, Japanese culture, and, and you know. Of course, eventually, you know, uh, this isn't a spoiler because it's probably all over the trails, and for the God's sake, it's Tyler movie. Joining them to, you know, defeat to defeat these uh, to defeat these Japanese soldiers that he trained, it was quite like I would. It was quite a thing to behold, and like it was. I wouldn't necessarily call it beautiful, but it was probably one of the best bonds. Between Bonds I've seen in the film where you have like with like these kind of things where you have like two people from completely different ideologies just coming together. It was quite a sight to behold. It was quite a joy to watch it come come together. Like there's this one scene where Ken Watanabe is kind of like looking up. It's like more like a cherry blossom where he's talking about his culture, his hair is is like your know, country and all that stuff. Like he he loves his country so much. He's and by the way, uh, Katsumoto I think his name is right. Hi. And so, yeah, Katsumoto, is he is such a character because you have him where he is such, he is so devoted to his country and, and so combat. devoted to his culture that he, he like, he's like so devoted to the emperor, like in a way he's like, in the way he views, I think he's like, he views this like him helping him because he's like, he loves his country so much, but he thinks they're going in the wrong direction. They're just going too fast into like this more Western feet and this more, and going more Western. That he just doesn't really agree with, and he's like going together and like fighting him just to keep, to like, to make sure that they don't forget the their roots, don't forget the genesis of the samurai and all that shit. It's, it's really fight. interesting. He's such an interesting character. But back to Tom Cruise. That's another thing I love about the movie. It's just the bro. It's like the friendship between these two. Like those two by the end of the movie, they are fucking bros. <laughs> by the end of the movie, that is, they are fucking bros, man. It's, I love the relationship between those two. It's fucking fantastic to watch. Anyway, I love like. Nate as a character is really cool to see him go from like this drunkard to you know helping the samurai, sobering up and all this and helping them and you know kind of like and almost in a way finding purpose in his life after everything he's been through but the what the most shocking part of it was definitely Tom Cruise's performance. Now I'm not gonna lie I haven't seen all of Tom Cruise's movies I've really only seen a handful outside the Mission Impossible films but every strike must because of that, I haven't really seen him do much in terms of like dramatic performances, but my god, like the man was straight up fantastic. Like there's this one scene where the man is like, ha I guess having withdrawal symptoms, withdrawal symptoms because he doesn't have, because he's like, you know, he's like, this is after he gets captured. And he's like, he's like baking for like sake because you know it's alcohol. And he's like, and he's having these nightmares from what, from some of the horrors you see in war, some of the stuff he has done. And he's just like screaming sake, sake, and just like he's sweating like crazy. And Tom Cruise's performance right here, I'm like, fuck, I did not know he was this good. <laughs> like I always knew Tom Cruise is a good actor, and of course you know he does his own stunts and every all that. But man, that man can act his ass off, <laughs> like. I was watching this film and I was like, I swear to God, Ken Watanabe and Tom Cruise did not get no at least one of them got nominated for an Oscar. There is something wrong with that man. Those two performances were fucking fantastic, man. I absolutely 
love their performances. They were both great. I already mentioned before how I love the relationship between these two. And, and you know what? Fuck it. And how beautiful it is watching these two people from completely different sides of the world, different cultures and everything, come together and kind of like see and kind of come together and become like the become, become my best friend. Oh man, it, I can go on about how much I love the relationship. It's such a great, it's such a great thing to watch. Um, another thing I gotta praise, man, is the music, bro. Y'all are gonna be hearing the, some of the soundtrack in the background of the video, and bro, it was fantastic. Like, this move, the soundtrack for this film was fantastic. I mean, it's done by fucking Hans Zimmer. Would you expect anything less from him? Like, I was watching this film, and I was, while I was watching it, I was like, damn, this soundtrack's really fucking good. Who composed this shit? And then when I saw the, and then I, when I was watching God, the end credits, I saw music done by Hans Zimmer. I was like, ah, no wonder it's so fucking good. <laughs> it's Hans Zimmer. <laughs> no wonder it was so good, man. But, um, yeah, the soundtrack, man, for this film is fucking fantastic. So many amazing beautiful tracks man and like oh such a good soundtrack fucking love it another thing i gotta praise is the battle scenes in this film Bruh. i would also say they are on par with the driving sequences and drive you know like they are such well choreographed edited shot perfect use of slow-mo it's amazing watch. Like I said, it's like those driving sequences in Drive. Which, a part of me always wants to call The Last Samurai the Drive of Samurai films. Because you have with where these movies, where both movies have these fantastic like action set pieces. The battle scene for, for uh, The Last Samurai. And you have like those two epic driving sequences for Drive. And where... They are both so well done, but they are done very few and far between the movie. Like in Drive, you only have you only have the one at the start of the film, where it's all in camera in, in the car, and then you have the one around like the end of the film, which should hit which should hit the fan. And and same thing with this one. You have one around the beginning part of the film that serves as when that serves as like kind of the catalyst for the rest of the plot when uh when uh, uh, uh what was his name? Katsumoto kidnaps uh you know kidnaps Nate. Um, and you know he shows him, the, you know shows him, and like nurses him back to health and everything. And then you have the the big final battle scene at the end of the film, which oh, it's so good, man. Like and and where, it, but that's not the main focus of the film, because the one that's like the real heart and soul, you have the relationship between the driver and that other one, which her name is slipping my mind at the moment. But she, but that relationship was so wholesome. It's, I would definitely say drive. You had the the leg up with the relationship between the driver and that woman with her kid compared to the relationship between Nate and um, Katsumoto, but both of them were equally amazing to watch unfold and, and, and in their own right. They were both just beautiful things to behold. Like, they were like, especially the one in Drive. That shit was so wholesome, man. <laughs> that, like, oh my god. I could go, uh, but I'm gonna get on the chat. Like, I'll take any... I don't know, man. Like, uh, I'm, 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 If I don't stop, I'll go off on a tangent about Drive, because it's such an amazing film, man. I could talk about Drive for hours, man, if I really want to. I fucking love Drive. Anyway, that's enough of me praising Drive. Another character that I really dug was the character of uh, Taka, played by Koyoki. Now, her character is a bit more spoilerish, so I won't go too into it, but I love the rel I love where it kind of starts and kind of, but it's also kind of like where I'm kind of if I'm like, Ugh, I don't know. Because <laughs> by the end of the film, I'm like, Man, bro. <laughs> but the relationship between her and Nate was quite interesting to watch unfold, along with, I believe, uh, one of the other samurai characters. I believe it was uh, Uji, uh, Yuji, Yujo. Yujo, did say his name is it? The guy plays by Hiroyuki Sada, where they were he. Without going too much of spoilers, I'm gonna try and keep it spoiler free in case any of you guys who are watching this film have not seen The Last Samurai yet. It was really interesting to see where it started because Nate plays a massive role into where her and her kids are now. And seeing how their relationship grows and turns and how they both uh, grow to, you know, uh, come together and like each other, you know, come together was quite interesting to watch unfold because of what Nate did to her uh, while not doing it purposely. It was, I'm, I'm trying to be as vague as possible, man. 
But that was also really, like the character, like the, the writing of this film was just so good, and the characters of this film were all great. Also, I mentioned before uh, Hiroyuki uh, Sada's character, where the dude is kind of like iffy yeah, on on native first. He's like, I don't know you, I don't like you, you don't look like me, you know, I don't trust this guy, you know. But by the end, they both come to an understanding of each other and work together to, you know, in the last big epic battle, you know. Did I mention how great the battles were, by the way? Because they're fucking awesome. <laughs> um. What else can I praise about this movie, man? Fuck, this movie is so good. Um, I already mentioned the action. I already mentioned the uh, the acting, and also from Kyoki as well. Her, her performance was also fantastic as well. I, I already mentioned before how I love uh, Katsumoto's character and the relationship between him and Nate, as well as the as well as also seeing him when he talks with the Emperor, his love for the Emperor, and all the stuff with the Emperor around like, the middle part and the end of the film. Was great. And bro, the ending. <laughs> Man, the Emperor begets go straight savage. I'm not gonna say nothing. Excuse me. I'm not gonna say nothing for spoiler reasons. Also, by the way, if you guys hear anything else in the background, I have a fan run. I have a couple fans running. It's fucking hot. But without getting too much, the man just goes straight savage. I'm like, damn, bro. That is straight fucking savage. Um, yeah. Okay, what else? Is there anything else I can praise about this film before I give you my final verdict and what, and what like, the one thing I was kind of hitting on the film? Uh, oh yeah, the cinematography. The cinema, this, this movie is shot fucking beautifully, man. Like, I already mentioned that one epic shot with the chair block, but I, and I already mentioned ad nauseum how great the battle sequences are, but I think it bears a pain. The battle sequences are fucking amazing. <laughs> and yeah, man. Holy hell! Like, oh my god, the movie was shot so beautiful. I would say I think I probably like. I think Ram was probably a better overall better shot film with like some colors and everything. But the Last Samurai was is no slouch either. Man. This is also a beautifully shot film. Now, only real problem I have with me was like was definitely was kind of with what what ends up with the relationship on Nate and. Um, uh, what was Ataka, I was kind of because because of where they started and what happened and what went down before with changes. I was a little iffy on what happens at the end. I was like, uh, I don't know how I feel about that. But besides that, but I have really nothing bad to say. With them. Like I said, this movie is a masterpiece, and and I put this in the same category as I put Leon the Professional and Drive, where this movie is fucking art. So would I recommend y'all check this movie out? Fuck yes! <laughs> if for some reason you were like me and you just haven't seen The Last Samurai, get up off your ass, pick up, go to your local Best Buy or Walmart or wherever the hell you buy Blu-rays, buy them from Amazon if you gotta, and watch this film. Because trust me, you will not regret it. Also, before we end this off, I'm going to give you guys my final verdict. I want to give a huge shout out to my man Service for once again doing the thumbnail. Thanks again, bro. And of course, I'll have his, I'll have his YouTube, his Twitter, and all that shit down in the description box below if you guys want to share our thoughts. So, overall, I give The Last Samurai a 10 out of 10. So, yeah. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Play. At least on Christian box below. And as always, be back for more. See you guys next time. Goose in, you're welcome, you're goose in.